What's up guys, welcome back to another episode of an hour and a half of people dying. So instead of doing my usual content where I make fun of YouTubers and their bad content, I'm actually making fun of a bad movie because that's very, 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 very original. So today we're taking a look at the movie Circle, which I had found out after watching Pyrocynical's video, which was basically just him 30 minutes professing his love about the movie Cube. Let's watch the movie and see what they have in store for us. Now we're gonna see this type of camera movement a lot throughout the video. At first it's really quick panning, I don't know if that's just to signify how many people there are, but then it slows down about halfway through the movie because I, I, I don't, I don't know. There's a lot of stuff I don't know about this movie because nothing is really explained. It's all, just, you're supposed to know that. After a shot that goes on for way too long, we get our first dialogue. Somehow they're asleep but standing up because that's that's how that's how we all sleep. So then the ginger girl wakes up, uh, she looks around, it's like, where where are we? And then the guy's like, Where do you think? Like we get trapped in a circle surrounded by sleeping people on a weekly basis. I just love going downtown every Friday, just gathering up a bunch of people and then killing each other. Oh my god. It's alright. It's all right. You're Help! Okay. Help! Just calm down. John! You're fine. Where are you? Skip it a button, that up! So we have our terrible first acting from that girl in the tank top, which, uh, uh, no wonder she only has a few seconds of screen time. Also, how come the ginger could step off the platform like three different, two different times, sorry, and then tap that guy on the shoulder and nothing happens? But then, this lady does it and then she gets shocked. Does the orb play favorites or is it just not awoken yet? So next, everyone wakes up. A few people die because of shock and confusion and all that kind of stuff. At the sight of seeing a dead body, because who wouldn't get startled? The movie just seems to change main characters a lot. Like, they play around with someone until they get bored of him. And then they're like, let's kill him. And then they get zapped. <laughs> Oh my god. And that body getting picked up, they only ever question that once, and everyone just as a group moves on at the fact that he just got pulled away by unknown forces. So everyone finds out that they can vote for each other, which they find that out disturbingly quick. I think it would take someone a lot longer to figure that out, but whatever. Let's just say for plot convenience, they somehow figure that out. It's a vote. What? We're, we're voting. Look, they're killing whoever gets the most votes. How do you know that? Because because the chimes go off when you close your hands. Wow, she figured all of that out pretty quickly. And actually in a matter of minutes. No one person would be able to figure that out so quickly. Another trend this movie does is it's super unrealistic with their characters. I know I keep saying this, but they don't fledge everything out. It's like, they just kind of like threw threw it on the ground like, oh yeah, we're gonna say this for plot convenience. Also, most characters are super base level boring. Everyone is either like a stereotype of how they look or just like one character attribute that's basically it. Like, oh yeah, let's say I'm in the movie and I am tall. That's my entire character. Like, uh, pregnant lady, she's scared for a child, that's it. Uh, the military guy, he was in Afghanistan, so he wants to see his family, that's it. And it does this so many times. It's every character is just like this. And I can't care for any of them when it's such surface level and so many people are died. It's like, oh, look, another person died. All right, let's keep going. Next, this douchebag comes in and tells everyone to kill all the old people because that'll buy them some time since they're gonna die already in the real world. So the group agrees they murder this old man and then they talk about what they remember before the circle and wow, everyone was in the same place or the general same area. 
and then they murder this old woman. For being in a situation they're potentially gonna die in, almost everyone has a super calm demeanor, almost like it's a joke to them. Like the guy who looks like he's straight out of the 40s couldn't care less, he just looks like he's kind of lounging around. So then next, it's the ladies in the hat, time to die, but uh oh, she's only 52, and she looks like that because she had chemo. Yeah, I beat it. You come back though. What the fuck is wrong with you? But for some reason, Mr. Alpha Male really wants to kill her because he hates people over the age of 40 at this point. And it's never explained why he does besides trying to buy time, but she's clearly young out of the little category. I don't know. So then basically they somehow forget about the old woman standing next to the cop who was there the whole time who he pointed at, but I don't know, everyone conveniently forgot about her. And then, douchebag dies. And then, the lady in the hat is actually a pretty good actor for this movie. She's one of the only actors who doesn't read their lines like it's a fourth grade play and they're in front of an audience full of parents. This will all make sense. That's worth a shot. And so then this woman starts talking about her life to help get them through the mystery or whatever. Uh, but for some reason, knowing that she has, like, knowing she's a real human, it doesn't, it doesn't help her at all. Everyone votes for her because she was talking or something like that. I don't, I don't know. If you saw someone talking, of course you would kill them because you know they have a cat and no kids. Okay, movie. The movie also does this, uh, like, the movie is more and more things that pile on top of each other but their staying anonymous thing is basically just not giving half the characters names there's like bill there's uh frank and then everyone else is pregnant lady i'm not kidding that's one of the names it just removes even more elements of the character that can make me care about anyone dying another problem this movie does because i love talking about the problems it seems is it has 50 characters so when someone dies that i've only seen on screen two different times if that or if this is my first time seeing them on screen i i can't care especially when the characters really don't care at all either it's like oh wow that's kind of sad she died but also 25 people just died before her so what tension does that have and then they go around to see who wants to talk next uh one guy refuses and then they go to the hispanic guy but he can't speak english because let's stereotype and make an entire character based off of that one factor so then they have to use that lady as a translator and then they want to kill the hispanic guy because he can't speak english so on and so forth so then the cop recognizes uh the guy in the tattoos as a criminal as someone who brutally beat his girlfriend uh the guy in the tattoos denies it forever but then he gets the zap so then the blonde woman says, what if we're supposed to decide who's good and who's bad? And then Surfer Jesus comes in and says, decide who to kill. Y yeah, thanks man. I, I didn't know that's what we were doing. The movie does a great job at making me like no one. There's only like one character you can root for is the kid who's been on screen for 30 seconds. That's what's wrong with this country now. Socialist bullshit. What? You want some reparations too? I mean, Jesus Christ! Give me a fucking break around here! So after realizing they can't vote for themselves, they realize that there's only gonna be one person left alive, which it's just an odd man out so unlike figuring out how the voting system would work which happened way too quickly they figured out there would be one person left way too late wouldn't that be one of your first thoughts if you're voting people out so then they try to vote out the kid because they think if they vote out the kid everyone's gonna have a better chance of escaping even though there's talking to be one person like you know everyone's gonna get a little a little, a little higher on the list because the kid is dead. They tie with this, like, middle-aged woman, and, of course, the middle-aged woman dies because if the girl dies, there's you can't progress the plot. Kid, you get good grades? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Straight A's? 
Oh my god, she got a beat. Let's kill her. And so now we have the worst line of the movie so far. I don't know why they didn't do another take, because that was so unconvincing. They're lucky I didn't see who said that, because I would just make fun of them for the rest of the movie. So the married guy proposes that they do volunteers so that they can have more time. The edgy teenager says that he'll do it, but then the tall guy says, no, I will do it, even though it makes no difference at all, because the kid's just gonna die in another two minutes. So then they both die. So then the army guy goes on a tangent on how he's not gonna die in this circle, and how he's in Afghanistan, and he has a baby he wants to see, and all that fun stuff, yet he still thinks either the kid or the pregnant girl should escape. So how is he gonna leave? They also always have enough time to talk before each voting. It, it's almost always like on the mark where they're ending the sentence. And either those aliens are very nice or... Convenience. So then the priest guy talks about how God is watching over them and their alien thing. Uh, the blonde guy throws a temper tantrum and calls everyone who is religious idiots. And then they do a fake out death. The fuck is this? So I, I've forgotten half the people have died. Miss Ginger dies, but I have no emotional attachment to her. So whoop de doo that's another, another death till this movie is over. The 1940s asks uh, this woman about her life. He asks if, what her husband does, but she actually has a wife. So then he explains how being gay is a sin and that he, she should be voted out. Uh, he gets called out for being homophobic. He disagrees, and then he inevitably dies, which, good. They then realize that someone would have to end their own life so that someone could escape as, like, a sacrifice. So if it's going to be the kid or if it's going to be the pregnant lady, uh, one of them will have to die. But then they think, why don't we decide for them? And so that's basically the plot of the rest of the movie. You should have never married that asshole. I know. So then these two people tied, which they were obviously ex, like that's her ex-husband, and then they do, do the old trope of making up right before they die, they make up together forever, and they die. They, they die. So then Surfer Jesus and G.I. Joe become the leaders of each of their opinions. One of them is to kill the kid or kill the pregnant lady, and the other one is to let the kid or the pregnant lady decide and surfer jesus wants to kill the kid and then uh sweater guy makes a bunch of bold assumptions about the pregnant lady how she's on welfare and the guy the husband or the dad could be in prison and very very big leaps they argue for way 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 too long while killing random people but then gi joe threatens to kill the wife because the sides are now uneven and so there is seven against six, so Surfer Jesus would be winning. But if everyone voted for the wife, she wouldn't die because there's still more votes on the other side. So there was literally no point in switching sides. But then, uh-oh, twist, they weren't married the entire time. Why did he switch? There was no point. If they were total strangers, then they wouldn't care enough to watch each other get killed. And then her justification on why she faked it sounds like something a child would say. You shouldn't have lied to us. I didn't lie. Yes, you did. You said you were married. I am married, just not to him. And I do have a daughter, Emily. I didn't lie about that. So since the movie is already pretty long and they have to start wrapping it up, uh, they decide to do a four-way tie, but then they tie again, so the orb just kills everyone who is in the four-way tie. Because that's how plot progression works. So then the wife dies, and then the one guy never votes because he's pure or something. I, I don't know. He, he doesn't tell us why he doesn't vote. And then Surfer Jesus is tricked, and he dies. And so ev everyone's dead except the kid, the pregnant lady, and then this one dude... So then this guy gives a big speech on those two have to decide who's going to leave. 
the little girl sacrifices herself and says, I, I will die for the baby. She says her name. It's Katie. And then, um, yeah, they both agree to go at the same time. Uh-oh, twist. Uh, the, the guy kills them both uh, by voting the pregnant lady out, and then the kid has already stepped off the platform. But that's not where it ends. Uh-oh, second twist. The fetus counts as a person. He obviously kills the fetus, and then he wakes up out where he sees tons and tons of other ships with presumably the same amount of people in each of them and everyone will get like booted out of the ship he then walks away goes to a small crowd of people staring at his ship and if you look in the background you can actually see uh some people walking in some traffic which is just good good filmmaking he stares up at the spaceship and the movie ends I i'm not even kidding the movie just flat out ends it there's no explanation of what happened and it felt like so much build up just to be slapped in the face with oh yeah he looked up at the spaceship i now left the movie with more questions than i began with this movie has so many different problems there's too many characters that i can't care about any of them and then the characters have no depth or if they do it's so little it's like the shallow end of a pool the ending is so it's so dumb it, it leaves on a cliffhanger but not for a it's up for you to decide kind of way no it's just like yeah, we're bored. Let's end it. This movie had a decent idea, but it was executed so badly. This movie could be half the length it is, even a quarter of the length that it is. And I'd like the movie more because it doesn't feel like I just wasted an hour and 15 minutes just for nothing. So that's going to conclude this video. Sorry this was a longer one. And thank you so, so much if you made it to the end. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure you leave a like. And if you want more content like this, make sure you subscribe as it is the number one way to support me right now. I'll see you guys in the next video where I reenact every single scene from this movie while doing Fortnite emotes. Bye.